Good morning. Um, welcome to the webinar on introduction to Scilab. What I'm going to cover today has two parts. One, there is a presentation which will walk you through Scilab product and uh, its key features with illustrative examples. Second part is going to be a live demonstration of uh, Scilab, what does it consist of, some of the toolboxes in Scilab, and uh, if time permits, we will show you some example programs as well. So the demonstration today uh, consists of the following topics in introduction to Scilab, its basic functions and atoms. I will talk about what atoms stands for and uh, what are its features when I get to those uh, parts of the presentation. Following this, there will be some user scenarios of how the various mathematical tools in Scilab can be used in your work. Pro products like uh, the graphing, uh, solving ordinary differential equations or differential algebraic equations, and the, the optimization tools. How do you use Scilab for various applications such as signal or image processing, control systems, test and measurement? The various Scilab tools such as the graphical user interface, simulation, uh, XCOS, and then the translator, the MATLAB to Scilab translator. Scilab is a numerical computation platform, as you may be aware already. It has a matrix-based syntax, has an easy-to-use interface, and uh, it's a familiar intuitive programming language. You don't need special compilers. You don't need to install additional interfaces, and it has a large suite of toolboxes that are instantly available. And we have a dedicated team of professional developers working on making Scilab better every day. The Scilab console, when you start using it, consists of these four parts. One is a variable browser, there is a history browser, the command window, and an editor window. The way you access help is by clicking on this uh, question mark icon and uh, the help browser would open and uh, the various uh, topics are categorized and under each of the topics the commands that are available are arranged with the input arguments, output arguments and uh, some example uh, use cases of how to use a particular uh, Scilab command. <coughs> Sorry. Say, uh, if you want to construct a random matrix and a random vector, this slide shows some of the examples. Say, A equal to R A and D of 3 comma 3 constructs a matrix consisting of uh, random numbers, size 3 by 3. And B equal to R A and D of 3 comma 1 constructs a column vector consisting of 3 random entries. And we want to solve for, say, A x equal to B, this shows how do you solve for it and the solution. To calculate diagonals of uh, matrix A, the command that is used is spec of A. Atoms is automatic module management for Scilab. It stands for the toolboxes that are part of Scilab. Commonly people assume that Scilab does not have toolboxes. Scilab has many, many toolboxes and uh, they are categorized uh, as is shown in this uh, slide here. Some of them are shown here. So the way you install a toolbox is you click on this icon and you get an interface which shows the various modules and some of the toolboxes that you may have already installed on your machine. To install a toolbox, you click on the install button. Let's say in this case I want to install Scilab image and video processing toolbox. You click the install button. Typical user scenarios. This, this is the next topic I'm going to cover in the webinar today. Various mathematical tools for plotting graphs, solving differential equations, and uh, to solve optimization problems. And where do I use them? It could be in applications such as signal or image processing, control systems, test and measurement, and uh, the various Scilab tools such as graphical user interface and uh, XCOS simulation, and the translator, the MATLAB to Scilab to translator. To plot two-dimensional or 3D graphs, Scilab has an assortment of graphic capabilities. It has a large 2D and 3D plotting library. There is 2D graphics, special control systems, and signal processing graphs. 
and there is a MATLAB plot and emulation toolbox as well. So, 2D plots, 3D plots, 4 plots and some direction fields examples are shown here. Moving to the next two topics, sol solution of differential equations. We have solved differential equations or differential algebraic equation systems. Scilab has toolboxes. Uh, you can install the differential equations toolbox or computer aided control system design toolbox or both of them. These come packed with a lot of uh, functions and uh, graphics capabilities and they are also integrated with the simulation tool of Scilab which is XCOS. Let's take an example. Say you want to solve this particular differential equation tan of dy by dt equal to minus y plus 10 t cos 3 t y of 0 equal to 0 and initial value of the derivative is given say dy by dt of 0 equal to n pi for n equal to 0, n equal to 1 and n equal to 2. So we get three sets of initial conditions and under these three sets of initial conditions how do you calculate y as a function of time and plot them? The box on the left shows the lines of program to uh, define the variable and uh, the function that is used for solving differential algebraic equations of this type. The plot on the right shows how the solution that we calculate and the plot of y as a function of time. You see three graphs because uh, we are solving for three different, different set of initial conditions and uh, the solutions for them are shown respectively in this plot. Third area is optimization. Scilab has many toolboxes to support uh, solution of optimization problems. The first one being optimization and simulation toolbox, which is built-in based Scilab. Then there is QuaPro for quadratic programming. There is a simplex optimization toolbox, the toolbox for unconstrained optimization. There is Icobyla, which is derivative-free, nonlinear constrained optimization method. There is Markov decision processes toolbox, there is iterative optimization algorithms, and the unconstrained global optimization of polynomial functions, to name a few. One example of an optimization problem that can be solved using Scilab. We are using quadratic programming toolbox in Scilab for solving this problem. Say you want to maximize x1 plus x2 such that these four constraints are given. The lines of program are given on the right side and uh, the solution as it is plotted in the console window is shown along with the plot of the solution. Advanced uh, signal processing, say you want to measure, filter or compress continuous real world analog signal. This could be of signals of various types. It could include sound, uh, data, images, uh, sensor data, biological data, radio, telecommunication signals. And now with this data, say you want to uh, do various processes. This could include filtering, smoothing, pattern recognition, prediction, correction, or digitization. These capabilities are available in the advanced signal processing toolbox in Scilab. There are many toolboxes available in Scilab for performing signal processing. Some of them are listed here, which is time frequency toolbox, there is Scilab wavelet toolbox, linear system inversion toolbox, there is empirical mode decomposition toolbox, there is infinite impulse response filter, image processing and design toolbox, Scilab image and video processing toolbox. There is toolbox for microwave, sound file data, then artificial neural networks. You can also perform signal processing in XCOS, which is the simulation environment in Scilab. Let me take an example of uh, signal processing with audio data. Say I have a audio signal, the plot on the top shows the signal as a function of time. The plot on the bottom shows the frequency content. The amplitude of the signal is a function of uh, frequency. Now you want to add Gaussian white noise to the original signal. Say the signal to noise ratio 25. Noisy signal and its frequency plots are shown in this graph. Say we want to use a finite impulse response filter as a, a filter to uh, remove the noise that we just added to the signal. This shows the construction, the syntax for creation of a finite impulse response filter in Scilab. Then a low pass filter with cutoff frequency at point 0.1 and triangle window. This shows the signal and uh, signal with noise and uh, 
the signal after filtering on the top. And the plot in the gra bottom shows the filtered signal as a function of frequency. As you can see, the finite impulse response filter is not good enough to perform the filter operation. So we turn to another scheme, which is wavelet. Wavelets are mathematical functions used to, to uh, do a time frequency analysis. Now, this shows the construction of uh, a wavelet uh, filter. And uh, when we apply the wavelet uh, denoising with uh, these parameters, say threshold, soft thresholding, signs unbiased risk threshold selection rule, and the Daubert's wavelet function of the eighth order, uh, when we apply this particular wavelet, this is the output we get, which is excellent. Uh, if you can look at the amplitude as a function of frequency, it's as good as the original signal uh, without the addition of noise. So the filtering function has been performed very effectively on the audio data using a wavelet-based uh, filter. So just uh, to recall, let me show the original data. This is the original data. We added noise, and now with the wavelet, we are able to get the original signal almost. So that's an example of uh, audio data denoising performed using a wavelet toolbox in Scilab. Moving to another large application area of Scilab, which is image processing. Here, we have captured various processing that uh, one would do with images. You would read images, display them, changing from, say, RGB to grayscale and binary, changing a grayscale image to its complement, cropping, resizing, adding noise, filtering, uh, edge detection, histogram, and uh, compression. Some of the image processing that you would normally do. Say, edge detection, histogram plot, image compression, motion detection. So, here there are uh, two pictures taken at two different instances from a traffic scene, and uh, there are moving objects. There is a car, there is a pedestrian. Now, we are using the Scilab image and video processing toolbox, one of the commands in that, to detect the moving objects in this, uh, in from these two images. The resolution is good enough to be able to pick up the fast-moving object, which is a car, and the pedestrian. When processed, this shows the moving objects in white. This can be used for an application such as uh, quality control. This shows an example of a uh, video where we want to detect objects by color. It gives the object position, size, and orientation. Another example where there is a group photo where we want to do face detection. The, this is a group photo where uh, using the face detection algorithm in Scilab, we are able to locate all the faces. Object detection, there is a palette of uh, objects of uh, various uh, geometries. Say there is small and large circles, there is a star, uh, triangles in various orientations. Now, using the object detection algorithm in uh, Scilab, we are able to identify all the triangles irrespective of the orientation. You would see a red dot at the center of the triangles in the palette. Another area uh, is control system simulation. With, uh, we want to control, direct, or regulate the behavior of systems. We can do linear, nonlinear controls, digital controls, optimal controls, adaptive and robust controls using the tools in Scilab. And uh, application domain, the physical domain could be many. It could span electronics, mechanical systems, thermohydraulic, uh, chemical systems, financial or biological systems. Uh, let's take an example of what are the basic uh, concepts in uh, control systems design. You have a plant and uh, there is a sensor which is monitoring some process parameters of the plant. And uh, there is a process variable which you want to control, say x of s, and x minus y gives the error. And the controller corrects for the error and uh, makes sure that the error between x and y are minimized. So the controller could be sending out signals to drive motors and uh, you want to be able to read sensor data, uh, model disturbances, sensor noise, this sh should be able to model them in your control system design. 
and the feedback is used for error control. Continuous time systems are modeled and explained for ease of mathematical manipulation. These are some of the very top level overview of a typical uh, control system, its components, how do you uh, design them. Now, to model control systems, uh, you need to be able to plot some of these uh, control system domain specific plots such as Bowley plots, Nichols, Nyquist plot or root locus and uh, the simulation tool should have the capability to uh, model these. Say, these, are, these tools are built in Scylla. Now control systems, to design control systems, the toolboxes that are available in Scylla are listed in this uh, slide. There is CACLD, which is Computer Aided Control System Design Toolbox. Then you have Artificial Neural Networks Toolbox. There is Celeste Lab, which is the Aerospace Toolbox. There is Design and Analysis of Computer, computer Experiments DAS Toolbox. There is LTI, Linear Time Invariant Systems Identification Toolbox. There is Linear Mode Neural Network Toolbox. There is Control Systems. In, you can use XCOS to model control systems. And there are many related toolbox for statistics, differential equations, and linear algebra. The computer-aided control system design toolbox can be used for modeling continuous time and discrete time systems. You can use it for nonlinear systems, for optimal and robust control. By optimal control, you are referring to uh, modeling using, say, linear quadratic Gaussian. Uh, for robust control, say, H2, H infinity, uh, following Riccardi equations can be done. Transfer function modeling is continuous time, discrete time. You can create transfer function uh, in S plane or Z transforms. Moving from say state space to transfer function or the other way around is possible using the commands in Scilab. Then say one example of how do you construct a transfer function using uh, say you want to have a plant which is one over S square plus two S plus one and calculate its impulse response and step response. The box on the left has the lines of program for modeling the control system. And uh, the plots on the right show the impulse response and step response. Digital system response, uh, the discrete transfer function, plot of the impulse response, plot of step response. Digital control, uh, a discrete system modeling. How do you they find like A to D um, and then like D to A converters. How do you set clock, clock and uh, how do you model a different equation? Design of a motor position controller. The plot, the graphs uh, are not shown in this slide. The control system, the plant, GFS, the sensor output OFS and the uh, process parameter to be controlled XFS and DFS is the disturbance to be added. So here the plant that we are referring to is a motor and X would stand for the position and Y is the sensor reading, C is the controller. So to begin with, before adding the controller, let's say the motor dynamic equation are written here, S into JS plus B theta equal to KI and then the electrical side of it, LS plus R times current equal to voltage minus KS theta S. Now using these equations we can calculate the transfer function and then write the state space, system state equation. The parameter values are given here. Now, to design the controller for it, either using phase margin or calculating the desired bandwidth frequency, how do you do that and calculate the frequency response? The plot on the left shows the magnitude and phase plot as a function of frequency, and then the plot on the right shows the closed loop step response. That is, if I give a step input, how does the system respond to it? Um, the pole placement design, then optimal control, linear quadratic uh, Gaussian design. Plant is given its weighing matrices and the noise covariance matrices are given here. Then robust uh, control, uh, say global for like problem where the plant is 1 over S square and you want to design an optimal controller K and compare it with uh, theory. The references for the global McFarlane method for robust control design is uh, given in this slide as well. And uh, have, when we take the plant as 1 over S cube, the controller that is defined, designed using the global McFarlane design for robust control of the plant 
is shown on the right side and the lines of Skylab program that is used to construct the robust McFarlane controller is shown on the left. Moving to another large application area of Skylab that is test and measurement. Say you have devices where you want to send out control signals and uh, you want to capture sensor data. For such applications you can use uh, Skylab. Say there is a test and measurement equipment acquire the data using the Scilab and its data acquisition toolboxes can visualize, analyze, create models and then experiments our system to be measured. So the whole loop is shown here. Another area is graphical user interface design. So you have written a program where you want to put a GUI around it where you enter some parameter values and also um, retrieve some values and make some plots and you want other GUI elements such as um, say menus, frames, pop-ups, sliders, uh, check boxes, radio buttons, lists, push buttons. All of these are available with the GUI builder toolboxes built into Scylla. One simple application is shown here. You want to read a spreadsheet, a CSV file, load it, see all the variables and uh, plot them. So you want to keep up adding new data files every time, plot them and clear the chart. Such an example is built using the GUI builder here. Another area, simulation using XCOS. It allows the user to build a wide assortment of models and perform simulations on those models. Very easy to learn and implement. It's very well integrated with the Scilab environment. Say ODE differential algebraic equation system, for example, done using XCOS. So we already seen examples of ODE solved using Scilab and the ODE toolboxes in Scilab. Here what we are trying to show is how do you model an ODE using XCOS. So example problem that we have taken is a, there is a population where there is an epidemic that is spreading. There are a certain percentage of the population which is susceptible to disease, are people who are infected and there are people who recover from the disease. So differential equations are shown, the XCOS block diagram and then you integrate these equations. The plot shows the number of people who are susceptible to the disease as a function of time, people who are infected with the disease, and the people who have recovered from the disease. And there is a peak in the plot uh, which shows uh, the, po the point in time where there is a maximum number of people that are infected in the population. Another area is signal processing application. How can you build it using XCOS? So the block diagram shows a sinusoidal generator which generates a sine wave. The plot of that is shown here and there is a random generator which adds noise to the data, noise to the signal and now we add a filter. So we multiplex all of this and show in this plot there is the original sinusoidal signal and then the signal with the noise and then the filtered signal. When you run the simulation using uh, XCOS you get the original signal plot, noisy signal and then denoise signal where we have used the filter whose transfer function is 1 over 1 plus S plus S square. Water tank design using XCOS. Here is the desired uh, water level and uh, this is a water tank system. There is a PAD control and uh, this shows the multiplex plot of the output from the system and also the original uh, say the pa parameter control value, the desired water level. The graph shows y as a function of time for uh, what is the control level and also when you add a disturbance, how does the system fit in. MATLAB to Scilab translation. Scilab has a built-in translator. So if you already have a MATLAB program, .m, you can use the MATLAB to Scilab translator, convert it into a Scilab program. This solution shows an example from communications area. The MATLAB program is shown on the left and the translated Scilab program is shown on the right. The output from the MATLAB and Scilab programs are identical. Uh, if you cl closely look at the values, uh, they are the same. It's just the uh, uh, scaling is different in the two graphs. This shows again uh, parts of the output from the program. Again, another output from the program. So in conclusion, uh, Scilab has a simple 
uh, syntax, which is very close to MATLAB, and there is also a translator so from MATLAB to Scilab. Scilab gives identical numerical results, which has been tested by various industries. And uh, Scilab is being used by 3 million users around the world. There are a wide assortment of toolboxes available in Scilab that would meet all your application requirements. Scilab has many baseline and extended features to support applications such as advanced signal processing, control system simulation, test enrichment, differential equations, and optimization. So here, I want to switch gears and uh, show Scilab. The console window. I want to perform some simple operations x equal to 3, y equal to 4, and I want to calculate z equal to square root of square plus y square. Some simple operation done in the console window. Now, say I want to write some program, I would use the text editor, sign out. x equal to length space of, uh, I want to define an array consisting of uh, 500 numbers. Defining a parabola. So length space command generates uh, 500 entries equally spaced from value 0 to 5. n equal to length of x uh, calculates the size of it. Though we already know, I want to use this number in a for loop. So for i equal to 1 to n, I want to define y equal to 2x squared plus 6, that's a parabola. And the say plot x comma y. Now we want to add some uh, labels to this plot. Access properties. Change font, color, and size. X axis, numerous. X axis uh, font, change, size, and color. Okay. So, this is a simple program that I just wrote to show how to use the text editor in Scilab for writing programs. So to access help, you can go to the console and uh, bring this up. So this shows the various categories, based scilab, differential equations, elementary functions, linear algebra, interpolation, computer data control system design, polynomials, signal processing, statistics, optimization, simulated annealing, graphics library, data structures, boolean, and uh, the functions available under them. Let's say Let's take one example. Elementary functions uh, under discrete mathematics, floating point, integer representation, trigonometry. It shows all the functions that are available. Say if I take linear algebra, so it show how do you uh, household the transformation, for example. So 
this shows the householder orthogonal reflection matrix. How do you construct it? And uh, say it also gives reference to QR decomposition. And there are example programs that are available here, which you can take and uh, run. So this is hell. The other important area I want to cover now is installation of toolboxes. So obviously I'm connected to the internet right now. So to install a toolbox, you would use Atom. The Atom is automatic uh, modules management for Scilab. And uh, when I click on this icon, icon, I need to be connected to the internet. Um, I would get an interface which shows the toolboxes that are already available on my laptop. And also it will list the various modules that are that I can download and install. So there are two parts to it. One is to install a toolbox, you need to be connected to the internet because it's downloading from a server and installing. To use the toolbox, you don't need to be once the toolbox is available on your computer. Okay. So this shows the toolbox. In my computer, the whole thing is clean. I don't have any toolbox installed. So let's say I install this image processing toolbox. So I click on this. So now it is installing the toolbox live. Once the toolbox is installed, we should uh, close Scilab and open Scilab again. You would see that this whole startup execution loading initial environment changes a little bit. That is, the toolbox will also be available. And uh, once the toolbox is available, um, you can use the commands that are part of the toolbox, which, is, which makes it very powerful. That is, uh, you, like say you want to perform, I showed some examples from image and video processing today in, as part of my presentation. Some of them were performed using the image and video processing toolbox in Scilab, which is what I'm trying to install right now. Okay, so you can see this message, installation done, please restart Scilab to make take changes in the Rakon. So I'm going to close Scilab and uh, open Scilab again to show you that the toolbox is indeed installed and you can use it. So start SAVP Scilab image in the video processing toolbox. So now if you go to the help, Under the help, there is a Scilab image and video processing toolbox, and all of its commands that are that can be now used in our program. So image read command, for example, to read an image. There is image write command and uh, other other commands for performing like uh, uh, operations on video files. Okay. Another tool in Scilab I mentioned is uh, Xcos. Okay, so you have, uh, this shows the various uh, palettes, say the sources, the things using which you can uh, build programs. I'll show one example program that is built using Xcos. This is a proportional integral derivative controller uh, tuning example that I'm going to show. So this is a simulation where we have we are we have we are using both the optimization toolbox and also Xcos. So the Xcos block diagram is this, and uh, this is the plant. This is the controller. Now I would start with some values for the controller, say P, I, and D values being one, one, and one. And uh, I want to seek the optimal values for P, I, D so that I minimize the error between my response and my uh, trajectory signal. And uh, this is passing variables to workspace because this simulation has to run along with the script.
script program written in Scylla. Let me open that program here so that I want to set the working directory. So this is the PID tuning program. So we are, if this is the Xcos block diagram, we start with some values for proportion integral and derivative loop. And then we optimize these values to get the optimal values of P, I, and D at which my input and output are uh, matched. I'm running this simulation. So the plot in green is the square wave, which is the tracking signal, and uh, the plot in black is the response. Ideally, when the error is minimized, these two plots have to match. So now the program is tuning the PIND to get the optimal set of PID so that the error is minimized. There you go. So now the output signal in black is very close to the control signal, which is in green, the trajectory signal. This is possible after running the optimization loop, which has found the right values of PID at which the loop is optimized and you can minimize error between the trajectory signal and the measured response signal. This is a classic example of, a, a, say, a control system design problem where you can use Xcos for doing, say, graphical programming. In, within the Scilab environment. And here not only have we used Xcos, we have also used the Scilab script and an optimization toolbox and how we have, how we can go between these two environments. Okay, so that brings me to the end of my presentation. With the time that is available, the next few minutes we'll, we'll take a few questions. So if you have any questions, please uh, type it in the chat window, and you can So the question is, how about porting Scilab to different platforms? Um, I have a follow-up question to that. Do you are you referring to different operating systems? Currently, Scilab would work on works on Windows, Linux, um, and Mac. So Windows 32-bit, 64-bit, Linux 32-64, and Mac. We could go to say equalist.com and uh, download Scilab or from the Scilab site. So there are separate binaries for uh, each of the operating systems. So how do, the other question is how do you uh, download Xcos? So when you install Scilab, Scilab comes with Xcos. So you don't need to separately download anything to install Xcos. 
However, for the toolboxes, as I showed, you have to use items to install the toolboxes. Which is good in a way, I mean, you don't have to uh, download all of them, which makes, which could make it heavy. Uh, it's, it's not a very heavy application, but then if, if, if it's taking time to load each of the toolboxes, uh, it's better you install only the ones you, you need. Okay, if there are no further questions, uh, you, I, would, I would like to uh, conclude the webinar. Thank you for attending and uh, have a good day and uh, happy Diwali.